Shia wants a tutorial on how to code a custom related list function. And whatever Shia wants, Shia gets. On this week's Azaz. Welcome to Ask Zanata Anything About Zoho. I'm Greg Belknap, head of Zoho Dev here at Zanata. Today's question comes from Shia Schlesinger, who asked on our YouTube channel, do you have any videos on how to create custom related lists? Good news, Shia, today is the day. I'm gonna take you through the different kinds of custom related lists and then show you how you can code a custom one in Deluge. To edit the related list of a module, we're gonna to go to the detail page of any record within that module. For example, I'm in deals. Here on the left side of the screen, you'll see a collection of all the related lists associated with that module. Many of these are generated automatically by lookup fields, marketplace extensions, or integrations with other Zoho apps. To add a new custom related list, navigate to the bottom of the list of related lists and click on add related list. Here you are given four options of related list types. First, widgets are embeddable components that are built using HTML and JavaScript. They can offer complete customization, but do require a thorough knowledge of JavaScripting which is outside of the scope of today's particular video. Functions refers to the type of coded deluge functions that we'll be using today that use XML formatting. Custom apps allow you to embed forms or reports from Zoho creator apps that you've built, and unselected related lists are where you can access any pre-existing related lists that have been hidden from the record details page. For today's example, let's create a custom related list for the deals module that shows us a list of other deals that are in the same stage as the deal we're currently viewing. For this function, we need to first, get the stage of the deal we're currently viewing, second, get a list of other deals with that same stage, and third, format that list into an XML format that the CRM can interpret into a list. First step, I need to create my new function, and I'll give my function a name, click on create. Now to start by getting the current deal stage, we can do that by simply setting the deal stage as the function's input. So I've decided to call my variable current stage and mapped it to the stage on the deals module. Go ahead and click save. For our next step, we'll use the search records function with the criteria of stage equals our input to get the list of all the other deals with a matching stage. In the search record function, we have to define the module that we are searching, which is deals, and then our criteria. For the search records criteria, we have to say the name of the field that we are checking against, which in this case is stage. Then we need to define the operator that we're using. The only options that we have to choose from are either equals or starts with, so we'll use equals. And in this case, we're actually going to write out the word. Then we're going to concatenate or join up our input argument onto that criteria. So now when we run our function, we will get back a list of all deals where the stage equals the current stage of the record that we're viewing. We're gonna come back to this matching deals search variable in a minute, but before that, we need to talk a little bit about XML. XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's a uh, predecessor to JSON for packaging data. Uh, Zoho uses it for formatting these custom related lists. Uh, let's show you the basic format. Here is a helpful article from the Zoho Developer Help Database that talks about adding these custom related lists and gives us an example of what an XML list would look like and how it can be structured and even populated dynamically. Down here, they have the basic format, which has a record tag that encompasses everything that we're going to send. Then we have a row tag for each individual record that we want to display within our list. Between these row tags, we have these FL tag, where we define the field label or the column header for that particular column. We have FL tags, where we define the value of our field labels for each of the columns. And then in between these FL tags, we put the actual values for each of those categories. And that gets repeated until we close out the rows and then close out the whole record. In addition, if you don't find any records, we can add an error message indicating that no records were found. So now let's return to our deal list variable and create a for each loop to dynamically add rows to our record XML. I'm going to start by simply creating a opening record tag as a string under response XML, and we'll be adding to this variable during our for each loop. 
So now for each deal in our matching deals, we're going to start adding to our response XML string. In order to continually add to the same variable, we're going to say that the variable equals itself plus some additional string. I'll start by adding our row tag. Then we'll add our first FL tag. And I'm going to say what the name of this column is going to be. In this case, we'll do the deal name. Now I need to put in my actual data value, which we'll pull from our deal variable in our for each loop. Then I need to close my FL tag, and I repeat the FL process for each different column that I want to represent. Uh, let's go ahead and add two more columns, one for closing date and another for deal owner. So here you can see that I've added a value for closing date, converted to a string with the month, then the day, then the year, and then deal owner where we get the owner and then we get the name. Once we've closed off all of our FL tags, we're going to add our closing row tag. Now that we formatted all our rows, after our for each loop, we'll close out the record tag. With our record tag closed, we can now return the response XML string back to the function. Now this, of course, assumes that everything goes according to plan and there are matching deals that uh, have the same stage. But what if they don't? Well, we should have a little error check and put an error message just in case. For that, we'll see if matching deals has a value of zero. So now I've put all of my response XML stuff inside of an if statement saying if matching deals dot size is greater than zero, as in there's at least one result, then we want to return this information. However, if that's not the case, then we're going to want to return an error message. All right, I've added in a few bug checks to our little code here. Uh, I've added that we want to check if the matching deal size is greater than one because since we're searching for deals where the stage equals the current stage of our deal, obviously at least the deal we're looking at should appear. So we only want to do anything if we find at least two. Then also within our for each loop, we want to check and make sure that the ID of a deal that we've searched for doesn't equal the ID of the deal that we're currently looking at. And then also to make sure that we don't run into any errors with the closing date in case it's not filled in, we only want to add the closing date if there actually is a value on the deal. And lastly, I added an error message down here where if we only find the current deal or no deals, that we receive an error message saying no deals found. Now that we're all finished here, we'll click on save and our related list now appears here on the left hand side. I did note one error that I had previously. I was missing the response XML inside of this final record tag. As a result, my, uh, my response XML string was getting overwritten and only giving the closing record tag. So even the best of us can make mistakes. But now that we fixed that bug, I can double check by clicking save and execute, put in a deal stage, and I can see over here that I am getting results and they are being formatted in the XML style. So now I'll click on save and that will return us to our detail page. Now here you can see that the related list is over here on the left, deals in the same stage, and we now have three columns for deal name, closing date, and deal owner. If you need to make any edits or changes or you wanna change the name of your related list, simply click on this drop down, and you can choose to hide this related list if you don't need it anymore, reorder it if you want to place it up higher, or you can edit it and adjust the input arguments, change the related list name, or edit the function itself. What's really great about these custom related lists is that the function runs every time the page loads. So you know that you're getting the most up-to-date data. It also helps to save space because the data is not actually being saved on the record, but just being referenced from its source of truth. The downside is a bit of a double-edged sword with referencing the data rather than actually saving it on the record. It means that any calculations that you might be doing or any data manipulation 
is not actually being saved anywhere and can't be pulled in, say, a CRM report. If you wanted that, you would need to actually save it on the record. The other part is that the XML-related list is limited in its customization in terms of there is no filtering, no searching, and no ordering capability. Not on the fly, that is to say. Everything that you want to filter, search for, or order has to be done in the function before the data is serviced on the record. Also, you can't display any images or use any kind of conditional formatting. To do that, you need to build a JavaScript widget totally from scratch. And that is how you create a custom XML related list. Let us know in the comments below if you have an idea for a useful XML related list and subscribe to the Zanata YouTube channel for more Azaz videos like this one. You can also go to zanata.com to meet with us or check out our full Zoho resource library. See you in the next video.